E-transgenerator potential on which uh, all the nuclei are moving and uh, by that they should uh, finally get the uh, initial molecular dynamics in which uh, our nuclei should be classical ones and the uh, electronic degrees of 3 gamma, uh, 3 bit and quantum mechanical way. Okay, but uh, first about the four open hybrid approximation. So ions are very heavy in comparison uh, to the electrons and uh, that uh, causes that uh, this approximation may be valid in some cases. Uh, so we are forgetting all together the kinetic energy of the movement. And then we can solve for the electronic states uh, for this uh, given nuclear positions and uh, we get the uh, energy eigenvalues as a function of the nuclear positions and we say that they are adiabatic uh, potential energy surfaces and there we can see uh, Rossings of these uh, uh, energy levels in the several dimensions of this one is speaking about conical intersections in that cases. Sometimes uh, there are some kind of avoided crossings as a function of uh, uh, ionic positions. Density functional theory is good for the ground state, and uh, we would like to uh, apply time-dependent density functional theory for the excited states because it's so efficient but uh, uh, one should uh, anyway say that uh, these excited states are reasonable for example by using some both hard of methods as benchmarks okay but uh, that was not yet dynamics and uh, in order to go on we make the so-called form one ansatz uh, for the electron nucleus wave function in this whole system so that we expand this wave function uh, in terms of the uh, solutions of this uh, Born Oppenheimer Schrödinger equation. Uh, you know, this is uh, capital phi 6. And then uh, we have uh, here corresponding to every adiabatic state uh, at given uh, nuclear positions, uh, nuclear wave function which now seems to be uh, like a time-dependent expansion coefficient. Okay, and uh, then we simply insert uh, this kind of uh, answers in the time-dependent screen equation and uh, multiply uh, left by complex conjugate of one of these uh, adiabatic uh, solutions and integrate over the space. And we remember that uh, the whole Hamiltonian is the sum of the Bonhoeffer Hamiltonian and the kinetic energy operator for the nuclear. And thereby we will get the uh, uh, equation uh, for the nuclear part uh, of the total wave function and uh, it looks like an usual Schrodinger equation uh, but there will be an extra term here it is coupling different uh, adiabatic uh, uh, surfaces and uh, we call them as a non-adiabatic couplings, then this uh, D matrix here. Okay, 
Okay, and uh, that uh, D matrix it arises because uh, we are here uh, operating on this electronic part, pay function phi, uh, by the nuclear population of nuclear gradient here, and actually the species is to be even an operator. And uh, here uh, these are uh, this algebraic potential analysis surfaces. And uh, what is the effect of uh, these terms here is that, uh, that they are mixing the solutions uh, whenever this uh, algebraic <coughs> energy surfaces come very close to each other. Okay. But uh, that was not yet this part of Oppenheimer uh, approximation to pay most of it. It is pay most for Oppenheimer. Uh, model, we forget uh, altogether this uh, complicated uh, couplings between the uh, area of the potential surfaces. And they try to get uh, very normal looking like a Schrodinger equation for the nuclear. And uh, that could be okay, this uh, for an open hand approximation for ground state dynamics or for uh, dynamics when we are very far away uh, from conical points or the avoiding crossing points. But that was not yet. Uh, uh, a classical description uh, for the nuclei and uh, something has to be done and uh, that's an exercise in the uh, theoretical mechanics and uh, it's a very nice way how we really can uh, start with the quantum mechanics and end up with the classical mechanics but I have to leave that as a homework the final result looks certainly something which we are expecting. So we have the Newton second law here, mass times the acceleration of one uh, ion is the force which is uh, acting on the ion, and this force is uh, calculated from the uh, potential energy sur surface from one special potential energy surface on which uh, our system is moving in this point of another scheme. Okay. And uh, that's where we now are. We started uh, from the uh, total solution of the quantum mechanical problem made this uh, form one ansatz, uh, uh, this kind of expansion in terms of the uh, adiabatic uh, solutions and uh, uh, there we have to solve uh, uh, this uh, adiabatic uh, form of an equation and uh, then we can uh, apply this uh, classical uh, Newton mechanics for the nuclear. Okay, but uh, our aim was this non adiabatic uh, molecular dynamics, and uh, let's do that now in this uh, RFS key. And starting point again is the, uh, the full quantum mechanical solution of the system also nuclei are here quantum mechanical but now instead of this uh, form 1 ansatz we are making LFS ansatz uh, uh, for the uh, total wave function of the system and in that system we have a time dependent uh, electronic part is phi 
and uh, then it's just multiplied uh, by uh, time dependent nuclear power, and uh, then there is a little bit less important uh, phase factor uh, for us, uh, where we have uh, the expectation value of the <coughs> Hamiltonian uh, at the given uh, time uh, in this state. And this kind of factorization was studied uh, recently by Mari Cross. And uh, they justified this kind of uh, form and also uh, what are the consequences of this form they were dealing with in their paper. Okay, and now this uh, Hamiltonian here. <coughs> it's really this part of Oppenheimer Hamiltonian, and uh, then we could also add the uh, time dependent uh, external potential, for example, a relative to the source of the background. Okay, and then again, one could uh, proceed in the same way as uh, with the Bord uh, Oppenheimer uh, dynamics. And uh, that's also very nice homework to do. Uh, the final results uh, will be a Newton equation of motion for nuclei, uh, but there will be now some kind of average potential and not uh, uh, adiabatic uh, potential and as its surface. And uh, then what is now nice is that uh, uh, we get the uh, photoelectronic part, a time dependent Schrodinger equation to solve, and uh, that gives the proper time evolution for the electronic system, and uh, uh, that we are solving with the uh, time dependent density functional theory. Okay. And we can compare that with the Ford Oppenheimer dynamics, and uh, there we are just uh, solving for this uh, time independent Schrodinger equation. And uh, the other difference is here that uh, uh, we will have uh, uh, an average value, uh, mean field value uh, of the uh, Total energy of the system from which we uh, take the gradient uh, in order to calculate the forces uh, for the nuclear dynamics. <coughs> and uh, what that means here is that uh, here this uh, time evolution is dictated by the electrons, and uh, then we have to use a uh, there is small time step of the electrons, which is of the order of octoseconds, whereas in the case of the uh, Oppenheimer dynamics, I'm going to use uh, the time steps for uh, nuclei, and uh, that's of the order of uh, pentoseconds. For Oppenheimer dynamics, is a very simple thing to uh, implement uh, uh, this NFS dynamics uh, requires a little bit more developed uh, part of it in the uh, implementation. Okay, so we have some kind of uh, average uh, energy here, and it means that the uh, uh, adiabatic states are mixed in this NFS dynamics and uh, let's study that uh, mixing now a little bit more carefully and uh, thereby we can uh, expand uh, the electronic wave function in terms of the adiabatic wave uh, functions and uh, then all the time uh, dependence will be in the coefficient C here. 
uh, that they will also keep the population of uh, every adiabatic state here uh, in this uh, total state. Okay, and uh, here are the results uh, of this kind of uh, substitution. In the case of uh, group level, we see nicely what the, the kind of uh, mixing means. We are taking a different uh, potential energy surfaces, uh, adiabatic potential energy surfaces with uh, certain weights, uh, and we are calculating the force on the ions. And uh, then, in the case of uh, electron dynamics, <coughs> Uh, we have uh, here a term which is a uh, mixing or uh, connecting uh, different uh, uh, adiabatic uh, solutions uh, uh, together, uh, cou coupling them when we are looking for the uh, total solution of the uh, Wave function. And this uh, coupling constants, uh, uh, they are the expectation values of the time derivative between the uh, two adiabatic electron states. And we can write it so that it's the uh, velocity of the nuclei uh, times. Uh, 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 this uh, expectation value of the nuclear gradient uh, operating on the electronic states, and uh, that's uh, denoted by this uh, small d vector there. Okay, so this is really a near field like treatment, and here we will have the non adiabatic states when we are looking at the total electron A function. And what does this kind of uh, mean field potential mean? So that is not used in the von Oppenheimer uh, approximation. We are, for example, on the ground space the potential energy surface. And there will be no mixing uh, between the different potential energy surfaces. But uh, when we are using the LFS dynamics, we can first be on the ground state here, we are very far away from the excited state, but when we are approaching the first excited state, there will be uh, this mixing take place and uh, Uh, then our potential energy surface somewhere uh, in pit B. Okay, and now then we wanted to uh, apply uh, this LFS uh, dynamics uh, in the case of a uh, uh, GPO program. And, uh, Uh, what uh, we first wanted to do uh, was that we wanted to look at it in a more general way uh, as a problem of the dynamics in the atomic position dependent phases, like that, that the phases come from dependent atomic positions. And uh, then we inserted that uh, uh, in the constant Schrodinger equation. And uh, we ended up uh, uh, for the equation for the square efficiency. And uh, there we have a uh, uh, couple of constants uh, which can be calculated uh, in terms of the uh, overlap matrices and so on. But the real problem is how to calculate the energy conserving forces in this kind of thing. It's not only the usual uh, thing that we <coughs> have the Hellman-Hellman force, but 
all our connections, and uh, then the, uh, the apply uh, uh, that in our calculations. There will be also terms in the clause due to the non identity and uh, that has to be taken into account. And uh, Ari, Lauri and Mille Havu uh, working it out in the PAW formalis and ended up with a very complicated uh, forms for the operators. Uh, but uh, anyway, uh, this kind of uh, thing uh, improved very much uh, uh, the total energy conservation in the different systems. And one of the test systems was this kind of uh, uh, protonated formal relief. And uh, when we excited that uh, kind of molecule to a very high state, uh, there is uh, really a big difference between this uh, von Oppenheimer uh, solution for the electronic energy and the energy solution uh, for the energy. And uh, in order to conserve uh, the total energy, uh, one really has to take this uh, non adiabatic forces uh, into account, so then we can get uh, very nicely total energy concentration, otherwise there are so much uh, variations. Okay, so let me just summarize now and uh, <coughs> say that this uh, NFS uh, uh, dynamics works fair, then we have a senior trajectory uh, uh, of nucleus, which is uh, dominant like that. Case, well, then we have uh, a very fast uh, process uh, and the excited <coughs> state uh, to the excited state and we don't uh, follow uh, the time development uh, too far away. Okay, and uh, then uh, it's a good thing when we are outlined uh, in a system that there is uh, plenty of uh, nearby uh, electron states and uh, then uh, this kind of uh, average force is uh, justified. But uh, uh, this is not a good solution uh, when we are uh, ending up uh, some kind of branching situation where our system could go in several directions. In that kind of uh, systems, we uh, want to have. Uh, other methods like surface hopping methods, which have also its own limitations. And uh, of course, we have to remember that uh, we are applying the density function, independent density functional theory, and I uh, should check that these excited states are okay. And uh, just to remember. Uh, then we have a time dependent basis depending uh, on the nuclear positions. Uh, then uh, one should uh, really uh, calculate the energy conserving forces so that there are terms uh, due to the non area of the couples. Okay, thank you for your attention. Just ask, what, what are your criteria for justifying classical nuclear dynamics? 
we're familiar, we're dependent on the time scale of the program. And so, so what is the time scale need in order to say cats for dynamics all right? So at least uh, classical dynamics is not uh, okay if there are really you know, some kind of quantum mechanics taking place like the uh, tunneling of the like, loop, like so that, that's not okay. Also, then also there is uh, maybe some uh, cases where the, uh, several different quantum mechanical parts of the loop, uh, in that case it's not okay. But, uh, but I would also think that I mean, even if you have a very simple potential energy service, and you want to propagate a nuclei for 120 seconds, and then you could not be able to do classes of dynamics. So, so you need some, I mean, it should depend on the, the time scale of your program. Yes. I would say it's energy, energy scale. You see, there, when, when they are here at the avoided crossing, there, there the energy scale is. is in the region of uh, nuclear energies. Normally you have uh, the energy scale is here, the electronic energy scale is here relatively high. So it's electron volts. But, but uh, I think, uh, I mean, there's it's also a problem with the quantization of the vibrations and so on. Of, of course it is. And I think that's what you were, I mean, that, that was how you were, your experience previously that completely, totally changed the dynamics too. To take that into account. Or see, no matter what your potential looks like, I mean, if you want to do dynamics for 20 seconds, you will not trust that classical dynamics. Because, I mean, okay. I mean, if you want to ask right, the probability of finding the parts of somewhere in mean, one fence a second after you start the propagation, it would be smeared out. Okay. I think that, well, yeah, but I think that 50 50 seconds might also be sort of, I mean, in the smaller range of. Uh, <coughs> Classical, but an institution or other. Uh, Short time is a big energy, so if you want, yeah, you sure, sure. Sure. if you have very high energy, like yeah. very heavy molecules, yeah. so one like that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. 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 yeah. So the, you're kind of right that, yeah, it's kind of hard care systems, or if you change a little bit the initial conditions, then they go a completely different way. That, that's why you probably should do a little sampling from the classical. So it's, uh, yeah. There are some situations where it definitely doesn't work. But of course, in many cases, I think it's a bit kind of representative. Uh, I would uh, just have to say, it's just hard to say, uh, if, we're already, if, you just, if you just do the classical dynamics. Yeah. <coughs> but the yes. chaos is a different problem. That's yeah. something that will appear in large time scales. This is something that appears in short simulation times. But here, yeah. in, in this ground state, potentially, you, you cannot uh, use. You do not have to use uh, well, uh, well, so the well. Why or why not? Uh, that depends on the curvature of the uh, yeah. mass. Strictly speaking, I mean, if, it's a a energy, if it's a molecule, well, then the vibrations will be heavily quantized. And the, 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 the energy levels between the vibrational states may be large compared to. I mean, they have to be very small yeah. compared to the energy. Yeah. Yeah. At the energy level, yeah. it should be very yeah. apple. Yeah. <laughs> I would like to just ask a few different questions. Yeah. So uh, uh, I, I'm, I'm very curious about this, you know, because, uh, and I think that you know I have a lot of questions, and, and I, I can only probably be allowed to ask one. This as this the ordinary error phase of the theorem becomes uh, difficult to e e evaluate if you don't either have periodic uh, boundary conditions or that is, you know, you can do it in equilibrium, or if you have a finite system, because you, there's a term in the air interest in, you know, when you evaluate the air interest theorem to get to this, the electrostatic forces which would be coinciding with the forces that you're not calculating. I mean, you're doing more. So this this assumption or this ansatz that, that is doing here is is more complicated actually, I think, than the traditional. Uh, Air interest, the sort of basis of this. So the low, the, the, if you go back to that equation there, but I don't know the equation I just before. Uh, anyway, the, the, okay, so this ansatz here, is, is that also for infinite systems or is it only limited to finite systems? And I'm very happy that you don't get just the electrostatic forces because I don't think that you should be getting just the electrostatic forces 
on this you have a very finite system. So I, I believe this is a for both finite and uh, yes, it is for both. This is for both, okay. And this is the, uh, just to add something, this is the standard LMK's answer. There is this nothing is new in okay. this answer. But it's an answer, okay. So but my question then is that if you take the, the wave functions and you, uh, you try to get to the equation that's like the electrostatic forces, which you're not doing, then you get a term that's indeterminate because you integrate out to infinity and you have a boundary term here and a boundary term there and you don't know what to do with that. That's Green's theorem. Right? You get a term in the evaluation when you try to do it with the Ehrenfest. Uh, Ehrenfest equation is correct, but when you try to actually use wave functions to do this, you don't know what happens to the boundary conditions. So if you have transport, you actually don't know how that term would evaluate. Mm -hmm. uh, and and I notice that what comes out of this is actually, if I understood you correctly, forces that are not just if they are the same, if you can ignore those boundary effects, you get back electrostatic forces. And I don't think that you should be getting them because that's not that's not consistent with the quantum kinetic account. You have a different generalized version, which are you know different version for, for, for open systems. But here you have forces that are not uh, uh, electrostatic, which I which I like that because you somehow gotten around that problem of this indeterminate thing out in infinity. In equilibrium, it's not a problem because you can always just say that you you know you take your very large system and you just repeat it infinitely. But if you have a transport problem, you actually get more information here. It seems so when you don't get back to the electrostatic forces, you get something more. Um, this is a, I have a different analysis of this, so you know if you want to, if you're interested. Yeah, but, uh, maybe we should discuss this later. But as we are late already.